All right, so we turn it on, we get a uh, error code E21. And there is a service manual for this product. It's a 400 page service manual. <sighs> yeah, so it, it goes through these tests and then when it fails a test, it says now E1, E11, E12. E. So it goes through all these tests until it fails. So it gets down to E21 and it says uh, it's done output amplifier tests and it says positive offset okay no so we're looking at a no positive offset so 21 um, says offset generator is unable to produce a positive offset Possible failure in output amplifier or offset control circuit U17 to U19, U20 to U22, or U27. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, we need to dig into it, I guess. 400 page. Yeah, I wish I had a printed out copy. All right, so, um, let's go ahead and open this. Open this thing up. Uh. Oh, long screws. HP always used positive positive drive screws, although these don't necessarily look like positive drive. Well, maybe they, yeah, they are. They are positive drive, and I'm using a positive drive screwdriver. So. All right. So, is this one loose? Yeah, this one's loose. All right, so the way these work is you flip them over and there's these uh, standoffs here where the board actually is held up all by itself. Isn't that nice? All right, now I need to get out the middle. Uh, that's a, that's a RF shield between the two to keep noise from the, uh, I should call it a noise shield. Keeps the noise from the going from top to bottom. All right, and now uh, this bore is loose, so that that's why this long screws. Um, all right, here. All right, and again, this has circuit board holders on this side. So now the boards are held and you can work on it. So I think, let me get this one off the bottom here. Let me unplug it. Get this one off the bottom of the a donor unit. I'm gonna say this is the one we're gonna work on here. This one out. Okay, well that's interesting. Uh, it got to the E21 and I pushed the key and it's working. Well, I mean, it's it I can change numbers and things. So let's see if it's actually outputting anything. Uh, turn the uh, uh let's see, this says one millisecond period. Okay, let's go to a hundred microsecond period. I don't see anything on the output. Uh, how about the trigger? Let's see if the trigger is doing anything. Oh, the trigger's doing something. Okay. Uh, 
50, yeah, 100 microseconds. Okay, jigger works. Um, all right. Uh, I do have an error in the front panel here, though, but it says duty cycle 50. Oh. Yeah, but the triggering's not... Yeah, I need the, I need the output to work. So... Uh, trigger control input, trigger output, uh, all right, let's go back to output, and nothing, so the output, uh, the output looks dead, um, external input, Disable, okay. Yeah, it's pegged low. Okay. I think that's uh, progress. I think we should be able to probe around inside and see if it's just the output drivers. A lot of times that's what's wrong with these things is they've got really heavy duty transistors that drive the output and they're very fast transistors and they probably get destroyed. Short circuit them or something. But I'm encouraged that we have trigger working and we can modify the, uh... oh, there we go. I'm able to change it. Yeah, if I can get this all on camera here, let's see. That's not a great, not a great shot, but we can look up there and as I change it here, it changes over there, so. Well, that's a good sign. That is a good sign. That's fine. Yep, that's all working. Range. Ah, range. Ah, nice. Oh, there we go. Ooh, we're gonna go real fast. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, making it go too fast. All right, probably needs a 50 ohm load or a trigger out. Ah, maybe my. Uh, yeah, we can make this sucker go fast. Three microseconds. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so range works. Uh, that works. Let's see if the output voltage works. Uh, oh no, this is the trigger output. We won't be able to see anything. Good. So I think I need to uh, look at the schematics um, for the output section. And um, yeah, it says possible failure in output amplifier or offset control. So E1 is the offset generator. So it's trying to, it's trying to do an offset on the output and the thing is pegged low. Uh, so yeah, the, so there's something wrong in the output section, but all the timing section and stuff seems to be working. That's a really good thing. All right, uh, I was just doing a visual inspection and uh, on the output there are these two caps and I noticed the caps kind of were bulgy on the top and I went, hmm. That's not good. There's another cap that's bulgy in the back, but I think it's just the plastic. Sometimes there's a plastic thing on the top that bulges, but the cap doesn't really bulge. But these looked bulgy to me. So I pulled them out and um, yeah, let's, uh, they're supposed to be 270 microfarads. All right, so let's test them. And this one's testing at <laughs> eight picofarads, nine picofarads. And this one is testing at, yeah, same. So these guys are dry, 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 dry. <laughs> and I think there might be a broken trace on the PC board. Um, visually, it doesn't look right. So yeah, I'll show you a picture of that here. It don't, it don't look right. So, I think 
we need to replace those caps and examine that trace, make sure it is making contact. And maybe that's all there is that's wrong with this thing. That would be great. All right, I replaced those two capacitors and I checked the uh, continuity of that one line and it was fine. Um, and we still get an E21. So that wasn't the only thing wrong, but it definitely was wrong. And it might have caused something else to burn out in the, uh, that might have been the cause that maybe there was a lot of ripple or, or something that uh, destroyed the output. So now we have good caps and we can keep troubleshooting.